24-7 that she's missing. And it's our child. It's a, you know, she's, to some people, she may just be, you know, a girl that's missing to us. Like, she's our world. She's our daughter. And we need to find her. We need to get her home where she belongs. This is just, it's, it never lets up. Never. You're reminded of it constantly. What's going on, guys? Uh, what you just seen is the first part to <clears throat> uh, a documentary that was put together by Dawn and Eldon Scott and, and half of the people in Vanderhoof, uh, uh, British Columbia. Um, they are the parents of the young woman that they talk about in this documentary. Her name is Madison Scott. Uh, now, to start with, um, her case is actually what got me started with my YouTube channel. It's what motivated me and drove me to do the videos that I do about people who vanish mysteriously in national parks and forests and you know so on and so forth, etc. Um, her story, her case, her disappearance really tugged at my heart. It was something that I was drawn to. Uh, it made me want to find out more about her. It made me want to made me want to do a lot of things. Um, it it was it, it just really messed with my heart. It, it you know it um. It's, it's just strange because of how everything happened and how it ended. It was just a, a big mess. But to begin with, uh, as far as what happened with her, first of all, like I said, her name is Madison Scott. Uh, she was 20 years old and she vanished without a trace on May 28, 2011. To uh, but before all that went up, before all that happened, she was actually um, uh, going to a birthday party that was being held at Hogsback Lake. It is a um, campground slash, um, you know, but it's it's a foresty area, you know, slash uh, campground. Uh, <clears throat> she uh, well, first of all, the the the, uh, the the party was being posted on Facebook, so everybody showed up. Um, but she, uh, she wanted to go and she had planned to, she didn't really have too many, she didn't really know what she was going to do that night. She had, she was just kind of up in the air with things that she, um, she was going to do because one of her friends that was in, um, um, another town, um, oh, St. George, uh, a friend of hers that was in, uh, in St. George came to Vanderhoof to visit her because they, they were supposed to have been hanging out that same night but she texted her and told her that she was going to a birthday party at Hogsback you know so she was like sorry so she basically canceled the plans that they had together at that point I guess she didn't want to disappoint her friend It was since it was her birthday and that's the kind of person she is she always thought of her friends no matter what was going on you know if she made a promise to somebody she kept it you know, and her prom she uh, had uh, she had made a promise to a friend to come to her birthday party. Now she was accompanied by her best friend, whose name is Jordy Bolduc. Um, when she was on her way to the party, she realized that she had the wrong size. I think it was the wrong size tent, so she had to get some, or the wrong size pegs, so she had to go back home and get some more. Uh, so she did. She turned around, went back home. And this was around 9:30 that Friday night, and she uh, came in. Her mom saw her, Dawn, and she said she was. She saw. Her, she was like, oh, "What are you doing back?" She said, "Oh, I forgot some more supplies. You know, her tent pegs." So she got them, and she went back out. And before she went back out the door, her mom was like, "Well, you know, have a good time. Be safe, and I love you." That was the last she spoke to her, and the last she had, had heard from her or seen her. So at that point she's heading to the uh, the party, 
And when they got there, there was a total of 150 people at the party. Uh, and the ages range from 18 to 40. You know, the big question is why were 40 year olds at the party? You know, we're talking about a bunch of high school kids. You know, but I guess, you know, when you live in a town like that where everybody knows each other, that's what happens. You know, you hear about a party, you want to go to it, and it's like, oh, come on, man, come on in, you know. So, uh, after that, you know, things started getting a little rowdy because a lot of them were drunk. Fights, I think a fight had broke out, and Jordy got knocked into a bonfire. And she got hurt, burned, I'm pretty sure. And so her boyfriend at the time picked her up and was carrying her back to the car because he was going to take her home. And as she was getting ready to leave, she was like, no, uh, Maddie was like, no, don't leave because, you know, she had a tent already set up and she was already in bed at that point. And she said, well, I can't stay because I'm like super drunk, so I'm going to go home. You can come with us. And she was like, no, my tent's already set up. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to stay. I'm going to camp out, you know, until tomorrow. Okay, so she was just like, okay. She felt bad about it because she came back the next day to find out what happened. But before all that, she, you know, like I said, she was there and people were leaving in certain groups. So by the time Jordy left, there was only a total of five people out of the 150 that was there. Uh, so and I'm pretty sure that Maddie thought that it was going to be people there, but that didn't turn out so well. So Friday came and went. Saturday morning so somewhere between 3 30 and 8 30 in the morning something happened to her they just don't know what and there's no evidence to show that something happened to her but uh, the RCMP think that it had to have been somebody that wasn't at the party because they polygraphed everyone that was at uh, Hogsback at uh, that same night and even the people that was there the night after uh, and they all passed it and uh, even Jordy passed it. You know, she took the polygraph test because everybody said it. She was the last person to see her. Hey, you want to cut it off now and open the window with the breeze coming? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the best, you know, using the daytime. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll be up there. You know. All right. But yeah, so um, at that point, um, she. Like I said, she passed the test and she everybody thought that she was boasting about it because uh, she was being interviewed by 48 hours. And she was like, and they asked her, so you took the polygraph test. And she was like, I aced it. I aced the test. You know, so she was happy. Now, people will look at that and say that, why is she all boasting about it? I mean, she knows something. I know she do. That's what everybody was saying. Even today, well, I think what it is. On the uh, the, uh, the documentary that's on YouTube, uh, the comment section is littered with a bunch of, you know, um, comments about how could someone just leave a person behind if you're supposed to be their friend and she knows something I know she does. But people, let's focus on the fact that she passed the polygraph test. Now, polygraph tests are made to tell if someone is lying. She did not lie. So therefore, she had nothing to do with it. And she is relieved because she already knew she wasn't, you know, she didn't have nothing to do with it. But she just relieved that everybody saw that she passed the polygraph test, you know. But I think people still have those thoughts in their head saying that she has something to do with it. And people calling her stupid and ugly, all kinds of crap. And I, I hate that she's going through it. I personally don't think she had anything to do with it because, you know, I... I mean, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But at the same time, she passed the polygraph test, so that's got to say something, right? I mean, that's just my personal opinion, you know. But we all have to focus on the matter at hand, and that's getting Maddie home, depending on where she's being held, okay? The idea is to come up with whatever solution we can, find out who may know something about her disappearance, and get them in so they can confess if they can find someone the, the the big problem is nobody knows what happened so there's no leads into what could have happened to her unless somebody was to slip up that's the only thing i can think of but um but yeah so 
like I said, at that point, um, Dawn, <clears throat> she was waiting for her uh, for um, Maddie to, Maddie to call, but that never happened. And she knew that the reception out there was wasn't wasn't very good so that's what she was banking on as to why she didn't call her i guess she figured she'll hear from her when she's walking through the door or something or when she gets back in in the town where there is a reception she could call her like say she's on the road back to the house or something like that you know but friday came and went saturday you know, saturday came and this is the part where jordy actually got a little you know she felt bad about her leaving her behind like that. So she went back to Hogsback to check on her. And when she got there, she said the tent was open and all her stuff was pushed to the side in both directions. So it was like she was trying to move it out of the way so she could, you know, lay down and sleep or whatever the case may be. Uh, now, there was a part where she said that the tent had been knocked down. Now, I had to listen to that part constantly because I was trying to differentiate the different parts that I was hearing about that tent because they showed a video of a helicopter flying over hogs back and then you could see her truck parked right next to the picnic table and you could see her tent which was a blue tent and it was up and fully you know it was fully tinted and it was it wasn't knocked down and I couldn't tell if the door was open or not, but that might have been. It's just kind of weird to kind of comprehend when did that tent get knocked down? Because jo I think Jordy said that when she arrived at the campsite, she saw that the door to her tent was open, but she didn't. I think, it, and after that, I think she said that it had been knocked down. And then I think Dawn Scott said that she saw. Her tent, but in the first part of the video, she didn't mention that she saw that it was not down. But later on, I think uh, later on in the in the video or in another video about what happened to her, she said it was uh, not down. But she went to she went back to the uh, the campsite to look for her because they haven't heard from her yet, and they saw some people there that had been there for a couple of days. This was after the party. And she went over to him because she re she recognized the fact that she, that they knew her, and so she talked to them, and they said they hadn't seen her. So after that, that's when she really started to worry and realize that something is not right because she called Jordy that morning, Saturday. Well, she called her mom first. To find out where she was and she said that she's been in since saturday like since friday night and saturday morning because she had to go to work you know and but see uh, um jordy did not call her mother and father to let her know that she didn't see her there she wasn't there she never mentioned it to them so that right there put her up as a red flag her actions the fact that she didn't even tell the parents that she wasn't there. i guess maybe in her mind she didn't want to worry them but at the same time, we're talking about her parents. You can't do that. But what's done is done. She didn't do it, you know. And so she just went on about her day working, you know. And then when her mother got there and she realized that something was wrong, she called the RCMP to report her as a missing person because she didn't do it but the first time because she knew how resourceful she was and how responsible she was. So she knew that she was going to be fine. So she didn't have any reason to, you know, uh, called the RCMP because first of all Addison Scott is a renaissance woman to you know this is the way I see it because she's into some of everything visual arts uh, she uh, was a part of a crew called Shenanigan Productions you know and they were the top of their class in visual arts because of the stuff that they created with movies and you know home movies and stuff like that uh, she's very good at writing and directing because they say she's a take charge kind of person she always take control of everything so she so that i guess to her she want to make sure everything's done right in her eyes but she's a all-around nice person she's um her brother said that she's very dynamic uh like because like one minute you see her in a dress and the next minute she's in coveralls you know changing the oil in her truck 
so she knows how to do some everything she's into water sports like uh, jet skiing uh, horseback riding dirt back I mean dirt bike riding you name it she does she even plays hockey so she's an all-around uh, sports nut you know she loves the outdoors she loves her friends she loves to socialize you know so she's a very well-rounded person she's very happy she'll she'll take she'll give you the shirt off of her back to help you you know so she's just she was i won't say she was perfect but she was a very she was a very well-liked person in that town everybody knew her whether it be the grown-ups to the, the the kids in school everybody knew her and everybody loved her so you can imagine that when they found out that she was missing everybody was floored some of them didn't even want to believe it because they knew they couldn't happen to her but it did you know so anyway um after she called RCMP, she basically reported her as missing, and she gave them a description of her. You know, just like what you would do when you're doing stuff like that. So here it is. I'm gonna show this little clip right here. And didn't really see anything. So shortly thereafter, Dawn contacted the police. RCMP. Hi, um, I'm calling uh, my daughter, is 20, we're at Hogsback, and I haven't heard from her since Friday night. And we just came out, and our pickup is here in the vehicle, and people haven't seen her at all. Okay, what's your name? Madison Scott. And what's her date of birth? April 29th, 91. So she was last heard from on Friday? Friday night, yes. Awesome. All of her stuff here, but yeah, I don't okay, know. Where, she, where does she live? With you? She, yes, with us in Vanderhoof. I noticed some people up there, and I went over, and it happened to be a friend of Maddie's. So. Yeah, okay, like I was saying earlier, you know, she went over to these people that they saw, and then she re she recognized them because she saw that they were friends with Maddie. She asked them, had they seen her? They said no. Now, like I said, that's when she really got worried, and she furthered the information that she gave RCMP about you know the fact that she was missing and gave a, a complete description of her now Maddie Maddie Scott is you know she's about 5'4 uh, she's like 170 ish as far as pounds she has ginger colored hair which is down to her the the like down to down her, her neck towards her spine you know it's like basically neck length hair uh, she has green eyes and she has a a bird silhouette tattoo on the on her inner left wrist um and, you know she's, she's very pretty you know and she she had you know she had a great smile and she looked she always looked happy she was always smiling and every photo that they showed on this documentary you know she was always smiling from the time when she was a little girl they had a picture of her when she was just like maybe probably three and then she they had showed a photo of her at 13 i believe when she had a birthday party so she they they had constant photos of her they were constantly snapping pictures she had t made all these videos with her friends so everybody had a piece of her they you know so she was she wasn't that kind of person that could just that would just turn away from something that was going to be fun she always went towards it you know now on the tw that now when she went to Hall's bed that was on the 29th that was the day when self-realization set in and she realized that something wasn't right and as, like i said she called rcmp now after that that's when the search started and to this day it is a total well may 28th 2017 will mark seven years that she's been missing now Matt, uh dawn and eldon scott has put together these uh like a, a function called um poker rides that they, they, that they do I think they say it's like every weekend uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning and they have put together ATVs horses and people that just want to walk and they actually built a trail for these ATVs and the horses and everything that they can walk down to search for Maddie just in case they were to find something now the thing is her parents need closure so whether the news is good or bad, either way, they know that they found their daughter. And there have been so many different um, 
people that have called into Crime Stoppers or that hotline that that's in Vanderhoof about you know Maddie, and they would say that they, they saw her here, they saw her there, but none of it actually panned out. So I asked. I ask anyone within the sound of my voice, come, you know, looking at this video from all across the world, whoever you are, if you know anything about what happened to Maddie Scott, please call the number that I will be putting down in the video description. Uh, there's going to be probably two numbers. One is a hotline that they put together in Vanderhoof, and one is Crime Stoppers. Okay, you don't have to give your name with Crime Stoppers if you don't want to, but if you do, you call them and you tell them. Excuse me, what happened? You know, just guys, come on now. It's been seven years, okay? She's been gone that long. She needs to come home. So if there's anybody out there that has her, obviously, you doing what you did is not helping you whatsoever because obviously you ain't get the, you, you don't have no reward money. I don't know if the ransom money has been talked about. I doubt it because if that was the case, I'm pretty sure they would have televised it. But... I don't, I don't even know if they're even a asking for ransom money. They're just probably doing it because they want to, you know. And I would hope and pray that nothing uh, of any other kind, like a, like a sex trade organization, because, you know, you have, and then you have these organ uh, harvesting people, you know, and they got people like that girl that disappeared in Aruba, you know. Uh, but like I said, that's just speculation i don't want to put any more onto her case than what art what already is because there's no evidence to back all that up and i don't have it so i don't want to be looked at as someone that's just making stuff up um and also um i definitely don't want to put her in the category of um the missing 401 stories because you know that's just kind of stretching a little bit too much even though she, a lot of what happened with her fits a lot of the criteria like the fact that she was a an extreme outdoors person you know she you know she was a well-liked person um she was at that range age of the people that disappear like 20s in her, you know in her early 20s uh i don't think she had any ailments or any um, medical problems you know because most of the people that are taken have medical problems or they have like a uh, um, a handicap is what I want to say. A handicap. She didn't have any of those. So, but like I said, she loved the outdoors and she was there by herself. So that was the perfect opportunity for her to be taken by whatever or whoever it was. But like I said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put her in that category just yet because there's not enough evidence to even state that that's what happened. Even though she just vanished off the face of the earth, it seems that's the way it looks. So, um, but yeah, right now, the only thing that matters is trying to get her home and they're doing everything they can. And I'm telling you right now, I am very intrigued and I'm very, um, elated, elated on how they're handling the situation. I mean, every single person in that town is involved in getting the word out there about Maddie and, you know, you know, and spreading the word about her disappearance and trying to figure out what happened to her they they are the most vigilant people that i've ever seen in my life when it came to a family member disappearing or a child the parents are deeply involved in it the, the her friends the people in the town i mean we're talking about people who have searched for her since day one and they still are they have personal close friends that have boats and helicopters who flew over vanderhoof looking in looking down at the the vastness of the uh, wilderness that surrounds Vanderhoof, uh, which is very thick, by the way. Um, and then you have people who have actual um, boats with um, rate, like underwater radar, where you can see what's under there. And, you know, it's, they were getting help from all kinds of people from everywhere. People will actually cancel their vacation and, and just spend the summer looking for her. That is how dedicated they are to finding her. Now, if she is somewhere within the wilderness of Vanderhoof, we're talking about areas that haven't been touched in years. Okay, they got cabins that's still standing. They've probably been standing there for like maybe, I don't know, 80 years since like maybe the, the 1800s maybe. 
but there's a lot of area in Vanderhoof that has never been touched or hasn't been touched in a long time. So the area just keeps growing and growing and growing as far as the fauna and the trees, you know. And for a person to be found in all of that, it'll be like finding a needle in a haystack, you know. And that's the worst part about it. They don't have, I don't know if they have enough manpower to even search these areas because you got to walk, you got to stride over bush and brush twigs all kinds of stuff you know swampy areas mossy areas you name it they have to walk through all this stuff just to even bump into something that may be a dead body and there have been some dead bodies you know found in that area but this area is like i think a couple of i think it's about 50 miles away from uh 50 or less 50 miles or less away from hogsback lake and that area is the Highway of Tears, where a lot of Native American women have vanished or have been killed or kidnapped, you know. And the same thing with, um, you know, American women, young American women, like 18 and up, you know. It's like maybe a total of 30 or 40 people that have turned up missing, you know, on the Highway of Tears. And there's a big case on that, which was also covered on um, um, 48 Hours. But... Um, yeah i mean i myself personally would love to go there and be a part of the poker rides just to see if i could find anything along with the people that's there you know maybe find something that nobody actually saw where i could probably be drawn or led to the area where she might be if that's the case you know so i really do hope that one day they will find solace or you know, and they will find or they will find her you know but just to, even if they were to find her remains, at least they know they could give her the proper burial. You know, at least they know they brought they finally brought her home, just not in the way that they would have wanted to. So um, to all you people out there, like I said, when I'm done with the video, I will put I will put the numbers that you can call to Crime Stoppers and the hotline for, you know, uh, it's called Finding uh, Maddie. And you can put your information in there you can call the number and, and if you got any leads let them know you know whatever the case may be you know it's it's just it, it, we, we just got to do something that's why that's why i'm doing my part i'm spreading the word you know and i, I actually saw in the uh, what well, it was a, a a newsreel of her disappearance which was actually a little it's like maybe it was done five years. The, the video was put up there on, on her brother's page five years after the fact. So it's the, actually an old video. There hasn't been any other evidence or any other news reels about her case unless you would just put it out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I was actually on his page and on Jordy's page. And Jordy hasn't been on Facebook since March of 2011. And this was a month. Let me see. No, this was, let me see, she disappeared in May, so she hasn't been on Facebook since that day, you know, because I think she had to just stay off of Facebook because she was being chastised by, by a bunch of people that she knew, you know, everybody was just hounding her about this, saying, I know you know something, you need to come clean, and this and that and the other, so she said that she was being harassed a lot on Facebook, so she, that's why she don't get on it. I think it said that she hasn't been on it since um either march or may of 2011 and that it had the date so um i'd have to look at it again but it said that she hasn't been up there since 2011 you know and her brother he's still on facebook you know i saw him up there and um i i i, I um when i saw that video that of the newsreel about her case i made my comment and i told him that i would love to give be, uh, be able to have a chance to talk to you about her case if there's anything else that hasn't been put out there on the, in the news or on the documentary you know I, and i told him that i have my own channel my own youtube channel and that I, t I actually posted a video about you know her case because i've been i had been following it for at least two years at that point and um i told him if you want to you know talk I, I, I you know i posted my number on there and so hopefully he'll call me and if not, that's cool because, you know, 
he got he still got a life to lead and i'm pretty sure they have done like over a million interviews about what happened with, with his sister so i can totally understand if he doesn't ever call me because he don't know me and i understand that too but i just let him know that i'm just as uh driven to to find out what happened to her and to try and get the word out there so everybody will know because a lot of people that i know didn't even know anything about her disappearance i didn't find out until what years later because she disappeared in 2011 of may and i didn't find out about this until like years later it was like maybe three four years at the time because i think the fifth year anniversary was coming up when i found out about it you know or you can look at the the videos below it should have the date of when i posted it and the year so that will let you know exactly how long i've been doing this you know and when i first started and she is the reason why she was my inspiration so and i'm gonna keep on doing what i'm doing i'm gonna make sure that everybody has everything they need as far as the information i don't want to you know promote any cheesy information i don't want to lie i don't want to ad lib i don't want to add stuff that don't have anything to do with what i'm talking about unless it is remotely um you know re remotely close to what i'm saying but you know sometimes you know i'll ramble sometimes but anyway but yeah um that's my time on this video i just wanted to post this you know as an anniversary um video for the you know the years that she's been missing and a recap because there were some things that i had posted that i said was wrong you know or not i i want to say wrong wrong but well yeah that's the way to look at it i got it wrong but um yeah so i just want to thank you guys for watching this video i hope you like it and i hope that the information that i that i have given you will um uh will help help you understand what happened with her you know like i said there is no known information about her as of now and it's like I said, it's been seven years and they are still looking for her with this uh, poker riot thing that they got going on. And it's doing very well. Everybody's involved, you know. And like I said, one day, hopefully, I will actually get a chance to go out there and help them with the poker rides. I would, I would actually love to do that, you know. But I'd have to plan, you know, the whole, the whole trip just to go out there. And I actually, I do want to make a trip to Australia, too and take my my uh, my channel over there and do some videos and post some videos in that area because um you know kim like kim star 66 get, sends me stuff about australia all the time so i would love to go out there and see what's really going on be there you know in the areas that all this crazy stuff happens like in the bush so but anyway, that's my time. I want to thank once again. I want to thank you guys for listening. I want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel, and I hope that you like all the videos that I'm posting. You know, and if you do, I got more coming as always. So, without further ado, I will see you guys once again later. Okay, I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna keep posting. You already know that, so I'll see you guys once again. Just keep your eyes peeled to my channel. To, Listen out for my uh, my notifications, all right? You know what to do. Tell your friends about me. Tell them to subscribe to my channel if they like hearing about this stuff. And because I want I want to keep going with the subscribe with the subscription, man. I want to get up there. I want to get at least once I get once I hit 200, I still know I'm doing real good. So I'm at 174. You know I want to keep going. So guys, you got like I said, just keep on doing what you want to help me out, all right? So once again, I will see you guys later. Aloha, mahalo, and ahuiho.